My name is Ian Ferguson. I am our lead SLS engineer, uh, and I've had the uh, wonderful opportunity to work on all of our SLS products over the years, including what we have here, which is uh, a Fuse One Plus and a Fuse One Plus cutaway model that I think we're going to talk about today. And then over here, we also have SIFT. So I wanted to open with like, what, what do you know about SLS printing? Uh, I know the rough way that they work, you know, with the, the powder in the bed and the, the laser that sinters it. Uh, but I don't know anything about the complexities behind it. Great. Uh, I spoke briefly with, uh, with Max about you know, how sensitive temperature control is and all that stuff. Cool. Well, uh, before we start talking about the machine, I just want to show you know, what are examples of some parts we can print. So this is an example of a, of a football made out of nylon 12. Um, we also have, we can make very functional mechanical parts. This is like a fan turbine type part printed in a, in a white nylon that we just announced. And then um, you can also print um, uh, flexible polymers. So this is a, this was an accordion fellow uh, that one of our engineers printed, uh, which is quite fun and satisfying. Oh, wow, yeah. Fully 3D because printed. It's, it's quite thick walls, but still flexible. Yeah. So, yeah. It's good geometry. Yeah, it's nice. It's the trick. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can do all these things. Um, and then you can also print, uh, it's great for printing uh, interlocking shapes. So this is a series of cubes with print in place hinges. Um, and so these are all examples of parts that are really good in SLS now. And we can talk a little about you know, why, how the machine works to produce use these parts. So this is the Fuse One Plus. And uh, um, just to give you some background on why this machine looks like this, uh, we do a hackathon every summer uh, where we take two or three days to do whatever we want to do. So one team took upon themselves to section a fuse because we're constantly trying to look at it and poke at the inside and it's hard. And this was a fully working machine beforehand? Uh, I, it, it definitely had worked. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the exact condition uh, it, it was before we sacrificed sale. it. Yeah, it wasn't brand new. So how does an SLS printer produce a part like this football? So the printer has really three key systems. Um, it has a uh, powder management system that gets powder this nylon powder that we use um, into the printer and uh, fills up layers of powder inside the build chamber. It has a thermal control system, an environmental control system. So we are heating, uh, heating this environment as well as manipulating the air to make sure that the environment is conducive to printing. And then there's the lasing uh, and optics subsystem. So that's actually what centers the actual part. So those are the three key pieces, um, and they kind of go in that order. So if you start with a completely new build chamber, you fill the powder into here, and it, it yeah. would just dispense a very thin layer on the top? Yep, exactly. So uh, Does it have to fill a certain amount in the bottom before it starts doing the precise layers? Yeah, exactly. So we have powder that goes through this hopper. Um, it gets agitated by this screw agitator over here. This is our sort of fun uh, dosing mechanism or feeding mechanism that takes powder out of the hopper and puts it into, uh, this is a trough with a uh, flipper. Mm -hmm. This flipper rotates, will scoop out. So this, this will spin until it forms sort of a semicircle in this trough. This flipper will flip up um, and then this roller will take that powder and spread it across the build, the build chamber. So yeah, so we're gonna, so basically we're gonna repeat this process uh, thousands of times during a print where we flip up, we present powder, the roller spreads it across. And so, yeah, the build platform starts at the top and descends uh, late so until the whole. Is this all just so that you make sure you have the same amount dispersed every layer? Yes, so we want to, yeah, we want to make sure you have the same amount dispensed every layer. And um, this machine does something that uh, is sort of nice for the users, which is it has no overflow. A lot of printers. Um, don't have a way of regulating the amount of powder in the system very precisely, and so they end up with wasted powder that's being dumped, and this system actually is a mechanically self-regulating dosing system. Um, no no uh, electronic sensors are required, but just the mechanical operation of this keeps the right amount of powder in the system at all times. Because I assume when you spread the layer, it's like if you move your hand across a bucket full of sand, it will 
kind of build up a layer as it yeah. moves along? Yeah, so yeah, there's a, so this, this roller is doing, yeah, so it'll have a um, pile of powder in front of it, and it does two things. It also, it, it both moves across and actually it's counter rotating as it goes. So there's a fun little like inverted rack mechanism over here to automatically uh, counter rotate as it goes and upside down so it sheds powder and stays clean. <laughs> um, and so that keeps the powder flowing nicely and uh, the roller shape helps uh, make helps make sure parts that are maybe not perfectly centering sort of stay packed in the bed. And how thin are the layers that it, put, that it deposits down? Uh, so we're doing uh, 110 micron layers. Um, yes, it'll repeat that up to a 300 millimeter build height. And so what happens is actually this build chamber will be fully filled with powder, so it's a cake, we call it. Uh, it's been warmed, so it's got a little bit of stiffness to it. It's not lo no longer like perfectly flowing powder. But this is removable and then it can get inserted into, you can take that out and insert it into your sift where you break out the powder in your parts. And does that push the parts up? It'll push them up, yeah. And then it has basically tools to do powder management um, and recovery. So this, this printer is a fun physics <laughs> project. We have every form of heating that is, radiative, conductive, and convection. <laughs> so we have, uh, yeah, over here we have uh, radiative heaters. So these are quartz tube radiative heaters that will shine on the bed. Those are the primary heaters. Um, but we also have um, conductive heaters heating our powder in the troughs to make sure the powder is warm before it comes in. Um, we also have multiple heaters in the build chamber. Keep all the surfaces. Those are basically the boundary conditions um, you're setting. So you want those to be a controlled temperature. Uh, so we have three zones of heating on the build chamber. And then we also in the back have an air um, system that's pumping uh, heated air into the chamber. And it can also, this printer can also be hooked up to a nitrogen source. So you can actually have an inner atmosphere for certain materials. But the most important thing here actually is you don't just need the heaters, but you need to control the heaters. So um, every heater has its own sensor, uh, but the most important sensor is the one that ties the, the quartz tube radiative heaters to the temperature of the bed. So we have the sensor. Um, this is like an IR parameter and it's looking at the bed uh, surface. So when this is powder, it's looking at the radiated radiation that's uh, heating that and, and looking at the IR um, that's coming off of that. And it gives you the an accurate temperature of the bed. Um, and this sensor basically is what allows us to control to exactly 180 degrees Celsius without actually uh, touching your powder. <laughs> so you want to be looking at it, but you can't actually touch it because you're busy firing a laser at it. <laughs> and so you need to have a way to control it. In development, every single one of these machines has a really high-end thermal camera mounted to it at all times to, to, to dial this in. This is a system, yeah, these are galvanometers and kind of tucked in the back here, it's a little bit hard to see, but there is a, a laser, so this is a fiber fiber laser, um, which is uh, fun because basically we can actually mount the uh, fiber laser package uh, in the back. It's in the back lower part of the machine. Uh, it's a 30 watt laser, um, but you get this fun little uh, laser <laughs> uh, optical fiber with a laser going up to the top, um, so you can kind of just like a cable or a wire. Uh, pipe your pipe your laser wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, very easy to package. Um, and this is one of the main differences in the Fuse One uh, from many other SLS printers. Is actually we're using a fiber laser with a 1064 nanometer uh, wavelength. Um, and so instead of uh, many other printers use CO2 lasers. And so CO2 lasers uh, are around 10,000 nanometers. And so they have a, they absorb into polymers differently than our laser. So when you see um, our materials are often gray, with now the exception of our new white material, um, they have carbon black or a similar IR absorbing additive in them that uh, that actually absorbs a 1064 nanometer laser uh, because raw nylon 12 does not. Um, and so that's actually kind of why it's a big deal. We were able to take the sort of the cost savings, engineering benefits using a fiber laser, uh, but we figured out how to uh, package a, a white nylon uh, that actually does absorb our IR. Um, and then there's a fair bit of work going on behind the scenes uh, doing air. So the nitrogen. 
he has the at nitrogen. He has a fair bit of work on the air handling system in the back with a lot of tubes doing because it recirculates uh, air in order to not waste nitrogen. You pump nitrogen in and you want it to recirculate that nitrogen rather than just dumping it to the environment. Um, so it recirculates it, filters it. Um, so there's a whole like filter and UX system over here. Um, or UX around the filter, you have the exhaust and things like that over here. Well, thank you very much for having me and showing me around the fuse. Yeah. It's an impressive piece of kit you've got. Yeah, it's, a, it's been wonderful having you, Tom, and it's been great talking through the fuse with you. Thank you.